Hello students, welcome back to IGC Extreme Fingertips. Today we are going to do a topical revision of trigonometry. Right. Now I'll give you a brief outline of what are we are what are we going to do. See, first I'm going to explain all the necessary theory which is required for this chapter. Then we are going to do worksheets based on this chapter. I'm going to solve few questions. I'll also attach the link of the worksheet which you can download from the description. Right. And by the end of that. I am damn sure that you will be thorough with all the questions and all the you know content related to Trigo which is getting repeatedly asked in IGCSE 9th. Now they had made some changes uh, since last 2 or 3 years right and I have also added such kind of questions which previously were not being asked but now are regularly being asked right. So now let us go to the topic first. Now what do you mean by trigonometry right. So Ideally, first of all, we should know that what is the need of the topic before going on to the topic, right? Now, where do you need trigo? Let's say I take an example. I want to measure height of a building, right? So, how can I measure the height of a building? There are many ways. The first way could be, let's say I can take a rope. I, you know, I go to the top of the building and I throw the rope down and then I measure the length of the rope. But that is not a very feasible way. What if the building is too tall? So that the rope cannot measure. So, right. I, let me give you one more example. Let's say in a war-like situation, trigonometry is highly used. Let's say you have an aircraft which is supposed to fire missiles at the enemy tank. So, how can the uh, you know how can the uh, pilot decide how when I'm supposed to uh, where I'm supposed to hit the enemy craft? Let's say this is the plane. This is my plane here, and this is my uh, enemy uh, tank here, right? So there are two ways. The first way could be the plane could hover over the top of tank, wait there, and then throw the missile down. But this is that is highly, you know, impractical solution. Why? Because if the plane stops here, it gives plenty of time for the enemies to shoot down the plane. So what the plane has to do is while flying the plane, what pilot has to do while flying the plane is supposed to hit the missile. So for that, he also he needs to know this distance. He needs to know at what altitude he is traveling, right? So, and he is supposed to shoot the missile at a particular angle, right? This is kind of the angle. So, this is how trigonometry is used here. Trigonometry is used in various cases, like let's say it, in physics also it is used. Like, you know, sign, light, light wave and, uh, you know, light is nothing but an electromagnetic wave. So, electromagnetic wave is nothing but if you draw the graph of uh, electromagnetic wave, it is somewhat similar to the graph of sine and cos, right? So, it is used there also because initially we believed that light was uh, traveling in a straight line, but then we got to know that light, light can also travel in a straight line, but it can also travel as a wave, right? So, when we draw the waveform of light, it is somewhat similar to the graph of sine theta or cos theta, right? So, this is why trigo is extensively used in n number of applications. In defense, in our day to day life, in our radars, in our cars, in airports, in you know, measuring heights of unknown objects, right? So, this is how Trigo is extensively used, right? Like I gave an example first, I told, I told that hey, let's say I have a building and I want to measure the height of a building. Then, how do, how do I measure the height of the building? What would I have done is, let's say this is the building, this is that, this is my building right now what i would have done is i would have you know i would have go to the bottom of the building and i would have moved let's say 10 meters to the left right so this distance i know which is 10 meters then i would look towards the top of the building right i would move then my I, I would move my neck to the top of the building so as you can see this forms an angle right as, as i'm moving my neck above to the top of the building it is forming an angle and I can, if, if I know this angle, if I know this angle, then with the help of Trigo, I can find out this height of unknown object without even getting into this part, right, without even getting, without even the help of a rope. So, this is how trigonometry is extensively used. Now, trigonometry is mainly based on two identities, right, two identities. Now, you know, it trigo is also divided mainly into two parts. The first is trigo of 
राइट एंगल ट्राइंगल एंड नॉन राइट एंगल ट्राइंगल लेट एस फर्स्ट स्टडी द ट्रीग ऑफ राइट एंगल ट्राइंगल नाउ लेट से वट इज अ राइट एंगल ट्राइंगल लेट से लेट मी ड्रॉ राइट एंगल ट्राइंगल दिस इज माई राइट एंगल ट्राइंगल वेर वन एंगल इज नाइंटी राइट नाउ नाउ हाउ इज ट्रीगो यूज देर आर मेनली थ्री आइडेंटिटीज इन ट्रीगो टू फाइंड आउट दी अनोन डिस्टेंसेस राइट बट फॉर दैट वी नीड टू फर्स्ट अंडरस्टैंड द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ एंगल राइट थीटा Angle is here known as uh, by Greek letter theta. So let's say this is my angle theta, right? Now I need to label these three sides. Now how do you label these three sides? The side opposite to this 90 degree angle, the side opposite to 90 degree angle is known as hypotenuse. The side opposite to this angle theta is known as opposite, and this is known as adjacent. So opposite, adjacent, hypotenuse. So based on this, we have three different identities. The first one is sine theta. Sine theta is known as opposite by hypotenuse. Cos theta is known as adjacent by hypotenuse. And there is one more identity which is tan theta. Now tan theta, guys, it is nothing but sine theta by cos theta right now what is sin theta sin theta is opposite by hypotenuse and cos theta is adjacent by hypotenuse so that eventually boils down tan theta to that eventually boils down tan theta to tan theta is opposite by adjacent now guys there are three more identities but that is not a part of our igcse 9th and syllabus that comes in a levels or in ibdt right so the other three identities are cosec sec and cot but we don't need to get into that right now now in order to remember this sin cos and tan there is a shortcut also the shortcut is the shortcut is known as so ka and toa sin is opposite by hypotenuse cos is adjacent by hypotenuse and tan is opposite by adjacent so this is a shortcut in which you can remember the formula of sin cos and tan now so you have taught me what are three identities now how to apply this identity in practical form right let's say again i want to measure this height of a building let's say the height of the building is ab right i want to measure this now in order to measure this what what i am doing is i am moving 6 meters i am moving 10 10 meters to the left right i am moving 10 meters to the left then i see to the top of the building and i see that the angle that the angle this forms is 30 degree right now i want to measure height of the building so now which identity will be applicable here see i have angle what i need to find is i need to find the side opposite to this angle and i also have adjacent so i'll use tan theta right so using tan i can say tan 30 is ab upon tan so my ab is 10 times of tan 30 right my ab is 10 times of tan 30 you can use your calculator If I am not wrong, tan 30 is going to be sin 30 by cos 30. Sin 30 is 1 by 2, and cos 30 is root 3 by 2. So this is going to be 10 into 1 by root 3. Right. Now how do I remember this tan 30? We'll get back to that. We'll come back to this later. So this is my height of the building. Right. Uh, there are n number of examples. Let's say uh, you have here. You can take. Let's say this is a wall. and to this wall i am you know suspending a ladder right this is my ladder right let's say this is my ladder ab this c i know that the height of the wall is 10 meter i also know the angle that the ladder forms is 30 degree 
now i want to measure the height of the ladder right again right we have to use trigo what trigo can be used let's say we have we need to find this angle sorry we have this angle we have this side opposite and we need to find hypotenuse so here we'll use sin theta so we have sin 30 is equals to 10 by ab so from here i can say ab is 10 by sin 30 now i know that sin 30 is half so 10 by half is 20 right this is how i can use this i can apply i can use this in order to find some in sometimes i can also use this to find angles where can i find angle let's say i have this is my plane this is my enemy tank and i want to shoot down this enemy right so this point this point let's say it is forming a right angle triangle now as you can say this is forming an angle theta this is 90 degree now let's say i know this distance i know i know that this distance is uh, let's say 10 meter and uh, i know this distance just a second guys okay uh, let's say let me take this as this distance let me take this as then let's say this is root 3 meters and let's say this distance is 2 meters right now i need to find this angle again i'll have to use trigo how can i use trigo see i have opposite i have i have opposite and also have adjacent tan theta so katova so tan theta will be root 3 by 2 so now theta is tan inverse of root 3 by 2 and if i'm not wrong tan inverse of root 3 by 2 should give me 60 degree sorry for my calculations if i'm wrong i don't have calculated right now but this is what i believe that root 3 by 2 will give me 60 degrees right now see these are few of the applications of sine cos and tan now as you have seen you would have observed that i have repeatedly used two angles i have used 30 degree i have used 60 degree so sir do i need to remember this values of 30 and 60 degree i would have said if you had asked me last year i would have said no but if you are going to appear your exams from 2025 then yes you do need to remember those values why because from 2025 the syllabus has changed now the first paper which you have is non-calculator paper so you need to remember few angles of sin cos and tan now what are those angles sir i'll help you out see what all angles do you remember for this you need to remember for your class uh, paper 1 is a paper 2 or paper 4 whatever you are giving so if you are giving code it is paper 1 and paper 3 if you are giving code and exchanges it is paper 2 and paper 4 so in both paper 1 and paper 2 are non calculator paper so now you do need to remember some of the formulas right so uh, let's say what angle do you need to remember you need to remember 0 degree 30 degree 45 degree 60 degree and 90 degree 0, 30, 45, 60 and 90. Right. Now, let's say, what do I need to remember? I need to remember the values of sine, cos and tan. Right. I need to remember the value of sine, then cos and then tan. Right. Now, I have a shortcut of remembering this value. I have a shortcut of remembering this value. Now, what my shortcut is, see, what I used to do is, even before the paper starts, I used to draw this table, right. So, uh, 0, 30, 45, 60, 90. Now, write from here, write 0, 1, 2, 3 and 4. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Now, divide all the numbers by 4. and take square root of these numbers so 0 1 2 3 4 divide by 4 and take root of these numbers so now what you have is just let me change the color of the marker okay so now what you have is 0 by 4 0 by 4 is 0 root 0 is guys 0 
वन बाय फोर रूट ऑफ वन बाय फोर इज वन बाय टू टू बाय फोर इज वन बाय टू एंड वॉट इज रूट ऑफ वन बाय टू इट इज नथिंग बट वन बाय रूट टू बिकॉज रूट वन इज वन रूट थ्री बाय फोर दिस इज गोइंग टू बी रूट थ्री रूट थ्री बाय टू फोर बाय फोर इज वन रूट वन इज वन राइट So this is how I remember the values of zero, thirty, forty-five, sixty, and ninety. Now, so how do we proceed for cos? Cos is opposite of sine, right? So the sine ninety is sine ninety is one. So cos zero will be one. Then root three by two, one by root two, one by two, and zero. You just need to write the angles in opposite manner. Then you have tan. What is tan, guys? Tan is nothing but sine by cos. Tan is nothing but sine by cos. So sine zero by one, zero. One by two upon root three by two, one by root three. One by two upon one by root two, one. Root three by two upon root three by one, root three. One by zero, guys. I said that is not defined. So infinity or undefined. See now you can see I made a mistake. What did what mistake did I do is I assumed that I forgot that root three by two is sixty. No, uh, what I'll make some changes is let's say this is one meter and this is also one meter. So root three by one. Now that is sixty degree, right? That is sixty degree. so this is a small trick this is a small trick to remember what the values of sin cos and tan are right this is a simple trick to remember all the values now moving further this is all you need to know about right angle triangle trigonometry now what if in some of the situation the triangles are not right angle then what do we do do we forget trigo no we have to carry trigo so now there must be some other rules for non right angle triangle right now let me take two examples let's say this is a triangle two different set of triangles now i have this side a this side as b and this side as c and i want to let's say i want to measure this angle theta but this is not a right angle triangle so what could i do i don't know no if if this had been a right, right angle triangle then i could have easily used sin cos or tan but this is not a right angle triangle so i'm stuck here This is one situation. Let's say there is one more situation. Let's say this is A, or else let's say let me take with an example. Let's say this is three centimeter. This is this side is five centimeter. This is seventy degree, and I want to measure this angle. Again, I am stuck here, right? So in such kind of cases, right, we need to use different rules, right? So. There are two different rules for right angle triangle. The first is sine rule. The second is cosine rule. So here we can use sine rule, and for this situation we have cosine rule. Now what does sine rule and cosine rule says? Let us get deep into that. Let us first understand sine rule. Let us first understand sine rule. So let's say this is a triangle this is a capital let me use capital letters the side is capital a angle opposite to that is small a capital b angle opposite to that is small b capital c angle opposite to that is small c so sin rule states that capital a by sin a the ratio of the ratio of capital a The ratio of capital A by sin A is the same as B by sin B, and is same as C by sin C. Or you can write it as sin A by A is equals to sin B by B is equals to sin C by C. Now both of these formulas are correct. If you need to You can use any of the formula, but if you need to measure the sides, I would prefer you use this. If you need to measure angles, then I would prefer we use this. Let us understand how we can apply this in a triangle. 
let's say I have a triangle. This is 3 centimeter. This is 5 centimeter. And this angle is 70 degree. Now, I need to find this angle. I need to find this angle. And I also need to find this side. Right. So, if I can somehow find this angle, then using angle sum property, I will be able to find, I will be able to find the third angle also. Right. So, how should I, I want to find this angle? Using sine rule. Sine rule states, let's say this angle is x. So, so, let's say this angle is x. So, I have sine x upon angle opposite to this side is, sorry, huh, side opposite to this angle is 3. Sine x by 3 equals to sin 70 by 5. So, I can say sin x is 3 by 5 times of sin 70 or x is sin inverse of 3 by 5 sin 70 and that is sin inverse of 3 by 5 sin 70. So, that is 34.3 degree. So, I have my x as 34.3 degree. Now, if I can, if I, if I know this angle, using angle sum property, I can also find this angle. I now have all the three angles. I have two sides. Can I find the third side? Yes. Right. I can find this third side also. See, I have this is, this is 34.3. Right. So, now this angle, let's say this is, this be y. So, now angle y will be 180 minus 70 plus 34.32, right. So, 180 minus 34.32 minus 70, that is 75.67 or I write it as 75.65.68. I have this angle as 75.68. Now, again by applying sine rule, I can find this side, right, I can find this side, I can use, I can say, let's say this is z. So, I can say z by sine 75.68 is equals to 5 by sine 70, rearrange and find z. So, this is how, even if we had two sides and angle opposite to one side we can find with the help of that we can find all the other angles and we can find the remaining sides. This is how sine rule is applicable. Right. We had 3, we had 5, we had, we had angle opposite to the 5. So, with the help of that we applied, we found out this using angle sum property we found out y and again by using uh, sine rule we found out z. So, this is how I can find all the triangles sides and angles in any given triangle. Now, what if the situation is somewhat like this for the cosine rule? Let's say this is a triangle, this is angle A, sorry, this is side A, side B, side C and I want to find this angle theta. Now, now I need to find this angle theta. I have all the three sides but, but, but I don't have any of the angle. So, here sine rule will not be helpful. Right, because for sine rule you need at least one of the angles, but I don't have any of the angles. So here we use cosine rule. Here we use cosine rule. Now what does cosine rule say? Cosine rule says let's I want to find this angle theta, right? And side opposite to this angle is a. So the rule says a square equals to b square plus c square minus 2 times of bc cos theta. This is what my sine rule says. a square equals to b square plus c square minus 2 bc cos theta. Right. Now, uh, let us take an example of cos rule to understand it more better. Let us say I have a triangle and the triangle is, let us say this is 8 centimeter, this is 9 centimeter and this is 10 centimeter and I want to find this angle theta, right. So, the angle opposite to this, the side opposite to the angle becomes A and I label other two sides as B and C. So, the rule says A square which is 10 square equals to 8 square 
plus 9 square minus 2 times 8 into 9 into cos theta. Now let me solve this. So, sorry guys, let us solve this. So, I have, I can rearrange this as 10 square minus 8 square minus 9 square is equals to minus 2 into 8 into 9 into cos theta. Now guys, remember this is in multiplication. What do some of the kids generally do is, they do 8 square plus 9 square minus 2 into 8 into 9. But that is not possible because this is multiplied with cos theta. So, these two terms are unlike terms. We cannot add or subtract that. So, now what you need to do? Let me take this on the left hand side. So, I can write it as 10 square minus 8 square minus 9 square upon negative 2 into 8 into 9 equals to cos theta. So, now my theta becomes cos inverse of whatever this answer is. Let us solve this. So, I have cos inverse of 10 square minus 8 square minus 9 square upon minus 2 into 8 into 9. So, my angle is theta is 71.79, 71.79. See, now I found out this angle. Now, I have, I have this angle. This is let me erase this. I have this as 71.79. Now, can I find the other two angles? Yes. How, sir? Now, we can use sine root. This is 10. We have angle opposite to this. We have this 9. Now, can we find sine opposite to this? Angle opposite to this? Yes. How? Using sine root. Right. So, 10 by sine 71.79 is equal to 9 by sine x. Rearrange this, find x. And, and, and rearrange this, find x. Once you have found x, you can using angle sum property, you can also find the third angle. So, using sine rule and cosine rule, he can find, he can find all the sides and all the angles in a triangle. Now, now you have studied about sine rule and cosine rule. Now, when to use sine and when to use cosine rule? There are two significant cases where you need to use cosine rule and in all other cases, you will use sine rule. The first case is when you have three sides and you need to find any one angle. So, here I use cosine rule or the second case will be I have two sides. Let's say this is 8 centimeter, this is 10 centimeter and I have an angle between the two sides. Let's say this is 52 degree. And now if you need to find the third side, then you will have to apply cosine rule. Right. First, three sides and you need to find any angle. Second case, two sides and an angle between the two sides. Right. We will use sine rule when we have a side and you have an angle opposite to the side. See here, I have an angle, but I do not have the side opposite to this angle. So, I will have to use cosine rule. Right. Now, let us move to the next part. That is graph. See, initially, they were not asking questions related to graph. But since last couple of years, they have started asking questions of graphs. They tell you to draw the graph of sin x, cos x, tan x, sin 2x, 2 sin x, cos 2x, 2 cos x, something like this. So, you will have to now learn the graph of sin x, right? Now, as you can see, guys, uh, sin x, right? Sin x. Now, you can plot this graph using the table function in your calculator. Or, you can simply plot the graph using angles. Let us say sin 0 is 0. Sin 90 is 1, sin 180 is 0, 270 is 0, 360 is, uh, sorry, 270 is negative 1 and 360 is 0. So, if you plot this and draw the curve, draw the graph, it is going to form a wave. This wave is known as sine wave. Now, as you can see, the sine wave takes 360 degree to complete one full wave. So, this is known as wavelength. This is wavelength is 360 degree or you can say the time taken is till 360 degree. This is one complete wave, right? So, this is my graph of sin x. Now, if we observe the graph of sin x lies from plus 1 to minus 1. That is the range of sin x is from plus 1 to minus 1. Now, if you take any given value, any given value of angle, it will always come between plus 1 and minus 1, right? So, now this is graph of sin x. What if they say to draw the graph of sin 2x? Now, how will that affect my graph? 
Now, what will that happen? 2 sin x means whatever answer you are getting, you multiply that with 2. So, this is kind of stretching the graph in y axis. How? Let us say sin 0 is 0, sin 90 is 1. So, 1 into 2, let us say this is 2. Again, now then you have 180, 180 is 0, 0 into 2 is again 0. Sin 270 is negative 1, negative 1 into 2 is negative 2 and 360. So, this is how my graph of sin 2 sin x would look like. It is like stretching the graph in y axis. Now, sometimes they also tell you to plot the graph of sin 2x. Right. Now, uh, let us see how do we draw the graph of sin 2x. Let us take x is 0. So, 0 into 2, 0. So, sin 0 is 0. This is 45. 45 into 2, 90. Sin 90 is 1. Then you have 90. 90 into 2, 180. Sin 180 is 0. Then you have 135. 135 into 2 is 270. Sin 270 is negative 1. And 180, 182, 360. So, this is what my graph of sin 2x would look like. Now, if you see, the time period has reduced to half. Initially, it was taking 360 degree to complete one full wave. But now, it is only taking 180 degrees. So, if they tell you to plot the graph of sin 2x from 0 to 360, then you will have to draw two waves of sin x. The first wave and second wave. Right. So, uh, this is sin x, sin 2x. So, 2x means the time period is reduced by half. Had the graph been sin 3x, it means the time period would have been reduced to one third. One third, right? So, just remember that. So, in the same way, you can plot this graph of sin x, sin 2x, 2 sin x, 3 sin x, sin 3x, 3 sin x, right? Now, there is also one more kind of question which is getting regularly asked. That is, what if, let us say I have sin x equals to 0.5, find x, right. So, you will say, sir, this is pretty easy, sin x is point, sin x, if sin x is 0.5, then x is sin also 0.5. So, my calculator says x is 30 degree, but in exam, they say, find two values of x, find two values of x. So, how do you find two values of x? Now, if you draw the line at 0.5, you can see the line it is intersecting the graph at two distinct points. The first point is before 45, which is 30, and the second point is somewhere after 35, but before 180. Now, how do I find this point? Right, I have a formula. The formula says sin 180 minus x equals to sin x sin 180 minus x equals to sin x. So, if x is 30, then 180 minus 30, that is 150. So, sin 150 is same as sin 30. In the same way, let us say the angle would have been 60. So, 180 minus 60, 120. So, 60 and 120, 10 and 170, 30 and 150, all these angles are same, right. So, you can apply this logic to find the second angle. Now, going on to the second graph, which is the graph of cos. Again, you can plot the graph using your function, table, table function in the calculator or you can simply plot the graph using the values of 0, 90, 180, 270 and 360. So, this is how the graph of cos would look like. Now, as you can see, the graph of cos is varying from plus 1 to minus 1. So, you take any given values of x you take any given value of x, it will always be from plus 1 to minus 1. Now, in the same way, they can ask you to draw the graph of 2 cos x. Again, 2 cos x would be, if this is cos x is from plus 1 to minus 1, 2 cos x would be from plus 2 to minus 2. So, somewhat like this, from plus 2 to minus 2, right. You just need to stretch the graph. If this is 1, take this point here, 2, then take if this is minus 1, this is minus 2, again 1. So, now you can draw the point and the graph would look somewhat like this. This is the graph of 2 cos x. In the same way, they can ask you 
टू ड्रॉ द ग्राफ ऑफ दिस इज टू कॉस एक्स दे कैन ऑल्सो टेल यू टू ड्रॉ ड्रॉ द ग्राफ ऑफ कॉस टू एक्स अगेन कॉस टू एक्स मीन्स रिड्यूसिंग द टाइम पीरियड बाई हाफ सो दिस मीन्स दिस वुड दिस इज माई वन एटी सो दिस इज वॉट माई ग्राफ वुड लुक लाइक राइट नाउ वॉट इफ वॉट इफ वॉट इफ दे आस यू टू प्लॉट द ग्राफ ऑफ cos x by 2 now in 2x if time period is getting half cos x by 2 means the time period will be double now so initially in cos x it was taking 0 0 to 360 degree to complete full wave but in cos x by 2 it will take 0 to 2 720 degree to complete one full wave so from 0 to 360 degree the graph would look something like this so uh let's say let me plot the graph so it becomes uh, easier for you uh, let's say cos 0 so 0 is 0 by 2 that is 1 right so this is my 1 let's say you have cos 90 90 by 2 is 45 and cos 45 is 1 by root 2 or you can say 0.7 something like this then you have 180 180 divided by 2 is 90 cos 90 is 0 270 270 divided by 2 is 135, right? So 135 would be 135 would be minus 1 by root 2. Sorry, this is 90, this is 180, and we have yes, minus uh, 1 by root 2, which is minus 0.7 or something like that. So this would be like this, and 360. So 360 divided by 2 is 180, and 180 is negative 1. So the graph would look something like this. So this is a half wave. And this is my first half. Now, this, if it goes up to 720, then my cos wave will be completed. Same for sine also. If they tell you to plot the graph of, if they tell you to plot the graph of sine x by 2, right? Then the graph will look something like this. This is my first half, and this will be my second half, sine x by 2, right? Now going going back. Let's say uh, again. There's one more question. Let's say we are saying cos theta is 0.5. So now my theta is cos inverse of 0.5. So this is pretty easy. Theta will be 60. But in exam they will say find two values of theta. I have found out the first one. How do I find the second one? Like sine one eighty minus x or sine x in the same way for cos we have cos three sixty minus theta is equals to cos theta. So you can see also if I draw a line at point five, you can see the first is before the first point where the line is intersecting the curve is before ninety, and the second point is. After 270, but before 360. So 360 minus theta is cos theta. So if 60 is the angle, then 360 minus 60, that is 300. So cos 300 is same as cos 60. Now let's move to the second part. Let's move to the last part, which is the graph of tan. Right now, again, if you want to draw the graph of tan. You can plot using the table function or simply with the values. Let's say tan zero is zero, tan forty five is one, tan ninety is infinite because tan ninety is sine ninety by cos ninety. Now sine ninety is one, but cos ninety is zero, so one by zero is not defined, right? So whenever you are drawing the graph of tan, you should always remember that you should draw a line at ninety degree. And then draw a curve like this, but this curve should never touch the line because we do not know the value of infinity. All we know is it's going towards infinity. It's going towards a. It's going to become a very large value or a very negatively large value, but we don't know its exact value, right? So this should never touch. So this is how the graph of tan would look like. Again, uh, tan one eighty zero, tan two seven days, math error, which is. Uh, infinity so the graph would be from 
positive infinitive neg negative to positive again negative to positive so this is a typical shape of tan x right this is the shape which tan x usually follows right now here also you can draw uh, tan 2x 2 tan x right you can draw that also now 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 let's say i have i have 10 x equals to 45 so i can find x as tan inverse of sorry not 45 sorry i mistake 10 x is 1 so x is tan inverse of 1 so now tan inverse of 1 is nothing but 45 degree but in exam they are saying find two values of x now i already have the first value how can i find the second value now if i draw the line at x equals to 1 you can see the graph is intersecting the curve at two different points the so first point is before 90 and second is uh, before 360 degree so and after 180 degree so for tan we have a formula which says let me erase this here which says tan 180 plus theta equals to tan theta tan 180 plus theta equals to tan theta so if my one angle is is 45 degree then my second angle is going to be 180 plus 45 which is 225 degrees right now guys why you should you should have a question in your mind that why sir 180 plus theta is 10 theta if one eight if tan 180 plus theta is 10 theta then can i say the same for sin 180 plus theta also right but that is not a part of the syllabus but if you want to know that sir why tan 180 plus theta is 10 theta or why sin 180 minus theta is sin theta or why cos 360 minus theta is cos theta then let me know in the comment box below if i get you know around 10 to 12 comments i'll explain in detail that why tan 180 plus theta is tan theta and you know if tan 180 plus theta is tan theta in the same way sin 180 plus theta is minus sin theta or you can say cos 360 minus theta is cos theta then i have tan 360 minus theta is negative tan theta if you want to understand that why is this the case then kindly let me know in the comment box below now if with this we are done with the theory part let's move to the worksheet part so that let's solve few more questions let's solve a couple of questions and with that we'll let us apply whatever we have learned till now and once we are done with the worksheet i can guarantee you that you will be thorough with all the parts see there are uh, in the worksheet we'll be covering the basic sums of trigo we'll also be covering 3d trigo i have not taught 3d trigo because there are no concepts to be applied in 3d trigo separately but there are few things which you need to understand in 3D Trigo, but will be better if we do that during the worksheet, right? And then I also cover the latest questions like this, where we are suppose where you have, you have been given the equation of in terms of 10x, and you have been told to find uh, the values of x, right? So let's now move to that part. Let us solve the first question guys. The first question says, I have been given psi, I have been given this angle, I have been given opposite, I have been given adjacent, sorry, not adjacent, I have been given hypotenuse and I have been given opposite. I am supposed to find x. So I can say sin x is 4 by 7. So x is sin inverse of 4 by 7. That is 34.5. 4 or 34.8. It is generally advised that you write your angles up to 1 dp. From the top of a building 3 meter high, the angle of depression of a car is 52 degrees. Right? The angle of depression. Now, what is angle of depression and angle of elevation? Angle of elevation means that I am at the bottom of a building and I am looking towards the top of the building. So, it forms an angle like this right this is called angle of elevation an angle of depression is similar to that let's say you are at the top of the building and you are looking down at some object right like this so again it forms an angle so this is known as angle of depression this is 52 degree 
forms a Z. So again, this is also going to be 50 degree. I'm supposed to find the horizontal distance. Horizontal distance. Horizontal distance means I'm supposed to find. I'm supposed to find adjacent. So tan 52 is opposite upon adjacent. So I can find X as 300 upon tan 52. Next question. Again, I am supposed to find angle BAC. She so has been given opposite. Sorry, I have been given adjacent and I have to find. I have been given adjacent and I have been given hypotenuse and I am supposed to find this angle theta. So, I think again, I can use cos theta opposite by hypotenuse. See, I have to find this value of x here. I think we can use Pythagoras theorem. 5 square plus x square equals to 8 square. See again, similar question, wherein you are supposed to find x, you have been given opposite, you have been given hypotenuse. Use sin theta and find x. Very similar to that. And I have one more question, wherein I have been told to find area of the triangle. Right. So, area of non right angle triangle is half AB sin C, where A and B are my sides and C is the angle between the two sides c is the angle between the two sides so the area is half 6.2 into 4.7 into sin 82 right so 6.2 into 4.7 into half into sin 82 14.4 this is my answer we can go to the next question I think there will be a question like this. Okay. So we have been here in a triangle PQR. Maybe first draw triangle PQR. PQ is 8 centimeter, QR is 7 centimeter. The area of the triangle is 17 centimeter square. Work out two possible values of PQR. Work out two possible values of angle PQR. Now we have been given area, so we can use half A. B sin C is equals to 17. So from here I can say sin theta is 17 to 34 by 56. So now my theta is sin inverse of 34 by 56. That is theta is 37.4 degrees. Now we have been able to find two possible values. Now guys, this is sin theta. So we know sin 180 minus theta is sin theta. So 180 minus this. So the next answer is 142.6. Next question. Again, no. This is a different question. I am being told to find AC. Right. So I think I have angle opposite to this side. I have this side and angle opposite to the side. So we can use sine root. So we can use AC upon sine 30 is equals to 8.15 upon sine 110. So from here I can say AC is 8.15 into sine 30 upon sine 110. So 8.15 into sine 30 divided by sine 110. So the answer is 4.34. Next, again, this is a question of sine rule. I have to find the value of x. I have been given angle. So I have been given side, angle opposite to the side. I have been given side and angle opposite to the side. You can use sine rule to find this answer of x. Next question, find the value of P. I think this seems to me like a question of cos rule. Right? We have been given three sides and I have been told to find angle opposite to the side. So you can use cos rule. It says the uh, angle opposite to the side becomes A and the rest two sides become my B and C. 
so we know the formula a square equals to b square plus c square minus 2 b c cos theta so we can rearrange this 5.3 square minus 2.8 square minus 3.6 square divided by negative 2 into 2.8 into 3.6 is equals to cos theta. So from here I can find theta as cos inverse of 5.3 3 square minus 2.8 square minus 3.6 square divided by negative 2 into 2.8 into 3.6 cos inverse of answer 111.2 degrees this is my theta next again adding a question of sign to similar question Think again a question of sign rule or again a question of area. Now I have area of triangle is of length, sorry, a triangle has length 2, 8, and 9 centimeters. So a triangle is length 2, 8, and 9 centimeter. Calculate the value of the largest angle in the triangle. Now, guys, the largest angle is generally the angle which is opposite to the largest side. So if this is the largest side, so this becomes my largest angle same way the smallest angle will be opposite to the smallest side so i am supposed to run this angle theta so now this angle opposite side opposite to the angle becomes a the rest two becomes b and c use cos rule and find the answer next i think this is a question of bearings ab is given to me as 5 km, the diagram shows 3 ships A, B and C at C. A, B is 5 km, B, C is 4.5 km and A, C is 2.7 km. Work out angle A, C, B. Work out angle A, C, B. I am supposed to find this angle theta. Right. So, I can use sign rule which says using sign rule which says 5 square equals to 4.5 square plus 2.7 square minus 2 4.5 into 2.7 cos theta so rearranging this and finding the answer 5 square minus 4.5 square minus 2.7 square upon negative 2 4.5 into 2.7 equals to cos theta 5 square minus 4.7 square sorry 4 point 5 square minus 2.7 square upon negative 2 into 4.5 into 2.7 and cos inverse of answer 84.000 or my theta is 84 degree next is the bearing of the bearings of sorry guys the bearing of A from C. Right now we have been given bearings. Now why bearings is used in C in order to navigate for the navigation of ships because we cannot use Google Maps in the C. Right? We can because generally Google Maps gives you direction of terrain. In case of C, we'll have to use we'll have to use bearings. Right. So for bearings we have three major rules. The first rule says any angle in the bearing is measured from north direction. Second rule says all the angles are measured in clockwise direction, and the third rule is you are supposed to write bearings in three digits. You are supposed to write bearings in three digits. So if the answer is 65, you are supposed to write 065. Right. Now, see in this question they have been given, they have given the bearing of A from C is 220. A from C is 220. Find the bearing of B from C. A from C is 220 meaning I am standing at C. From C means I am standing at C and I am looking towards A. The angle is 220 degree. So I am standing towards C. Now when I am looking towards A, the angle which it makes is 
220 degree which means I have been given this angle is 220 degree. I have been told to find the bearing of B from C. B from C which means I am standing at C and I have to look towards B. Right? I have to look towards B. So now this as we know this is 220 degree. Right? We know this is 220 degree. We just found out this has 84 degree. So I can now I can now uh, say that this angle shaded in black is 220 minus 84. Right. 136 is my answer. Now as we can also ask you to find bearing of of C from B, which means See, north is not drawn. So, what we will do is, we will draw north here. And from B, you have to go and look towards C. Right. Now, how can you find this angle? See, I have this is 136 degree. I have this is 136 degree angle in black. So, can I have this angle? Yes. How? See, this forms, these two are parallel lines and this forms the transversal. So, these are two co angles. Now, we know co angles measure L up to 180. So, 180 minus 136. So, this is going to be, sorry, this is going to be 44. And I can measure this angle as 360 minus 44. Which is, if I am not wrong, 316. Or we can also tell you to find the bearing of C from A, which means this angle. How can I measure this angle? See, I have I have this angle 220. Now, can I find this angle? Yes. 360 minus 220, that is 140. So, this is 140. This is going to be 40 degree. But in this way, you can find bearings. Right? Or you can also see bearing of B from A. Bearing of B from A, which means I am supposed to find this angle. Now for this, I know this is 40 degree. I need to find this angle now. See, I have this angle. So I have to now use sine rule. Right? I have this angle 84. Angle, uh, angle side opposite to the angle. I have side and I have, I'm supposed to find angle opposite to the side. In this way, you can find any given bearings possible. Right? Bearings is a relatively easier topic. Same question of bearing, so I am skipping it for you. I am leaving this question for you. Uh, there are some questions of 3D geometry, but let me just start from this one. Okay. The diagram shows a square base ABCD. The diagonals of the base AC and BD intersected M. Okay. The sides of a square are 8 cm and the height of the pyramid is 5 cm. Okay. The first question is find the length. Find the length of edge PB. I am supposed to find the length of the edge PB. Because this is 3D geometry. Right. This is 3D geometry. In 3D geometry generally questions of uh, pyramid uh, and prism. Such kind of questions generally come. So you need to remember few things in 3D geometry. The base, base is generally in uh, most of the cases it is either a rectangle or a square. Now in case of rectangle or square, the diagonals bisect each other, right? And same case of rectangle also, the diagonals will bisect each other. So if whenever two diagonals meet, they will bisect each other. It means if this is 10 centimeter, this is 5, 5, 5, 5, right? This will be the case. And in any given case, the height height of the pyramid or the prism will be perpendicular to the base height will be perpendicular to the base so in any given case this angle will always be 90 degree now i have this is a right angle triangle i have one side i don't have the other side but i am told to find this angle can i find this side can i find one of the diagonal yes i think i can use uh, uh, pythagoras theorem so i can say bd will be root of 8 square plus 8 square because in a square our angles are also 90 degree so BD will be root 128 now BN BN is half of BD so BN will be 
as I said, the diagonals bisect each other. When they meet, they bisect each other. So, B1 will be root 128 by 2. Now, I have this side. I have this side. I can use Pythagoras theorem. So, my PB is root 5 square plus root 128 by 2 square. So, root 25 plus 128 by 4. So, root 57. PB is root 57. Or a better answer will be 7.55. Right. Now, what is the next question? The next question says, find the angle between base ABCD and PB. Guys, whenever we are talking about base, it means they are talking about diagonals. Right. Base means diagonals. Find the angle between base ABCD and the edge PB. So, this is my edge PB. Now, base means diagonals. Now, I have two diagonals AC and BD. Now, which diagonals is touching PB? I think diagonal BD. So, I am supposed to find this angle theta. Now, if I redraw this, guys, this is nothing but a right angle triangle. This is my theta. I have this side as 5. I have this side as root 128 by 2. I have this side as root 57. I can use any of the three identities to find this angle. Let's say I use tan theta, which is opposite by adjacent. So, tan inverse of tan by root 128. That is 41.47. So, my theta is 41.47 or you can write it as 41.5 opposite upon adjacent. I think this is also a similar question. Okay. Now, again, see, find the angle between the line AG and the base of cuboid. See, the base is a rectangle here and line AG, line AG. And B, B means diagonal. Now, which diagonal is intersecting or is touching the line AG? I think we will have to draw two diagonals. It is pretty visible that diagonal EG will touch this line. So, I am supposed to find this angle theta. Now, I have this is a right angle triangle. Again, this is base. See, this is a base. This is this rectangle here. So, the angle form will be 90 degree. So, this is 5. This is 13. I can simply use, I have opposite, I have hypotenuse, so tan theta, sorry not tan theta, sorry guys, I can use sin theta is 5 by 13. Really easy question for 3 marks. I think 1 mark is, 1 or 2 marks is just for identifying the angle. Again, find the diagonal BS. Right, so this is 8, this is 8. So I can find the diagonal AC. So now AC or BD, both the diagonals will be equal. They will be root 8 square plus 8 square, which is again root 128. So I am supposed to find diagonal BS, but so this is root 128. Again, this is going to be 90 degree. SD is again 8 cm as it is a cube. So, BS will be root of 128 square plus 8 square. So, the final answer is 128 plus 8 square. That is 8 root 3 or 8 root 3 can also be written as 13.85. The answer is 13.85. 8.5 or 13.86 also or even you can write 13.9 next find angle SBD ok I am supposed to find angle SBD just let me draw this first let me draw the triangle let me erase everything else and I am supposed to find angle SBD right so I am supposed to find guys this angle uh, I have this as 8 root 3. I have this side which is root 128 
and I have this side which is A. Now uh, I have to find this angle. Guys, this is again theta. See the diagonal and height will form a right angle triangle. This is a right angle triangle. S, B, D. This is again a right angle triangle. Use any of these realities to find this angle. Okay. Now, a similar question again. We'll skip all of this for you. We leave it. We'll leave just kind of questions for you guys. Let me just go through the next part of question. This is again a question of bearing. Leaving this for you guys. Again a question of bearing. Question of bearing. Bearings. Now, this is the next question. Sketch the graph of y is equals to sin x now guys this kind of questions are getting asked repeatedly since 2020 right so you are supposed to remember the graph of sin x cos x tan x sin 2x cos 2x tan 2x now sin x now there are multiple ways the first way is using your table function you can plot your table from 0 to 360 leave a gap of 90 degree right the step should be of 90 degree plot the table and you'll get your answers or I just remember the curve of sine. So this is half of this will be let's say 180. This is 90 and this is 270. So I know the graph will go something just a second. Let me just erase this graph and draw it again. So that will be maximum at 1 and minimum at minus 1. So this will be the graph of sin x. Next, next is solve the equation 3 sin x plus 1 equals to 0 for theta for x lying between 0 and 360. So now rearranging this equation I can write 3 sin x equals to negative 1 sin x equals to negative 1 by 3. So sin x is negative 1 by 3 that is my answer is 19.47 right but guys my answer should be between 0 and 360 but this is negative so I have to find two answers which are in my range see now let's say this is my quadrant wherever the angle comes negative negative angle means negative angle means it is measured in clockwise direction now what do i mean by that see if i say 20 degree which means this is my 20 degree but if i say negative 20 it means the angle is measured something like this right so so i have this 19.47 so that is this is 19.47 now this is my clockwise angle can i measure the anti-clockwise angle yes 360 minus 19.47 360 minus 19.47 that is 304.340.53 so one answer is 304.340.53 sin theta right so we have our first answer is minus 19.47 so we'll do 180 minus of minus 19.47 that is 180 plus 19.47 and that brings me down to 199.47 or you can write your answers as 199.5 next question on the sketch a graph of cos x from 0 to 360 now for cos x you should know that it ranges from plus 1 to minus 1 right you know that cos you should know that cos 0 is 1 cos 90 is 0 180 is negative 1 270 is 0 and 360 is 1 you can plot using the table function in the calculator and with the help of that you will be able to plot the graph easily next question Solve the equation 4 cos x plus 2 equals to 3. So I can rearrange this as 4 cos x equals to, <coughs> equals to 1, cos x equals to 1 by 4, and from here I can write x as cos inverse of 1 by 4. Now cos inverse of 1 by 4 is 75.5, and we know that cos 360 minus theta is nothing but cos theta so the other answer will be 360 minus 
that is 284.5 okay done let's move to the next question the next question says the bearing of b from a is x the bearing of a from b is y x is twice 2 is to 7 calculate the value of y now we know as the both of them are north so if this is x the second angle will be 180 minus x why because it is co-interior angles they form they are add up to 180 now this is 2 is to 7 right so we can <coughs> write this ratio as 2a and 7a okay so so the total that is 180 minus x plus y equals to 360 so from here i can say minus x plus y equals to 360 let me substitute the value of x and y x is minus 2a y is 7a sorry x is not minus 2 x is 2a so from here i can say minus 2a plus 7a equals to 360 so 5a is 360 and my value of a is 360 divided by 5 which is 72 right so from here we can find y y is nothing but if i'm not wrong 5 times of uh, a right so 5 into 72 but i think i have made some mistake let me just see here okay minus x plus y is 360 minus 180 minus x plus y equals to 360 minus x plus y oh yes i think i think i have found my mistake but still let me just uh, reconfirm my mistakes <coughs> 2a 7a 180 minus x plus y equals to 360 minus x plus y should be oh th it should be 360 minus 180 right so this should be not 360 this should be 180 right because this goes on the right hand side so 360 minus 180 is 180 yes so 5a 5a i have to rewrite this as 5a or equals to 180 and from here 5a equals to 180 and from here i can say my value of a is 180 divided by 5 that is if i'm not wrong it should be 36 right and 7 into 36 that is 252 is my value of y next question plot the graph of y is equals to 10x okay from 0 to 360 okay so guys for uh, 10x what you do is generally you draw a dotted line at 90 degree and a line at 270 degree why these are uh, asymptotes these are those lines where your graph becomes undefined right and this is the shape as we had already learned kindly draw using a scale right kindly draw using a scale so it will be better for the better for the paper checker and better for you also the shape would look very good next solve the equation 5 10x equals to 1 so from here i can say 10x is 1 by 5 x is tan inverse of 1 by 5 now that is 11.31 now guys we know that tan for tan the second angle will be 180 plus theta so 180 plus theta which is 180 plus 11.31 that is 191.31 you can also write your answers as 11.3 and 191.3 next again sketch the graph of 10x but we'll skip this part solve the equation 5 10x equals to negative 7 so from here i can say 10x is minus 7 by 5 x is tan inverse of <coughs> minus 7 by 5 x will be x will be 10 inverse of minus 7 by 5 that is that is negative 54.5 right that is negative 54.5 now let me draw negative 54.5 negative means the angle is measured in clockwise direction so if i plot this angle this is going to be my negative 54.5 degree right now if i draw the positive angles it will be 360 minus 54.5 <coughs> so 360 minus 54.5 so the first answer will be 305.5 
Now, now we know that for tan 180 minus sorry 180 plus theta is tan theta. So 180 plus negative 54.5, which brings me to my second answer. 180 minus negative 54.5 that is 125.5. You should always check your answers in the equation, right? Now, next question. I think we'll leave this for you guys. This is a pretty easy question. Hope you have enjoyed. Kindly like to our channel, subscribe to our channel. If you feel, if you find this video helpful, let us know in the comment box below if you need any more help, right? Okay, so bye bye and have a great day. See you in the next video. For the tail time, take care.